Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's Facebook Live. My name is Kathy Frum. I'm your Who's Front of Viking Educator. And today we are going to talk about getting ready for fall sewing. I know it's August here. However, fall is right around the corner. All of the retail stores are putting out the fall decorations and I'm seeing costume fabric in the stores and and kids are getting ready to plan their Halloween costumes. So it's time to get your sewing room ready to go. I know over the summer, many other things may have taken up your time and you haven't sewn as much. So a little organization can go a long way in um, ensuring that you have more time to sew this fall. So um, I want to mention a couple things. Um, in the background, we have Amy and Ryan keeping everything running smoothly. So please post any comments you have in our chat. This Facebook Live will be recorded and posted shortly after our live ends so that you may come back and watch it. Or if you joined us late, you can come in and, and see it from the beginning. So no worries on that. So let's get started. Well, today I have for you a project. Um, we are going to make some pattern weights today, along with talking about ways to organize your space. So let's get started with um, how I created these pattern weights. I'm going to switch you over quickly to the software just so you can see um, what I created here. All right. And I've set up my software screen with our 80 by 80 hoop. That's just a small three inch, about three inch hoop, a little bit, maybe a little bit bigger than three inches, but um, just a small workspace. Now I like working with a smaller workspace when I'm designing something small so that I don't get too large. And first off, I want to create a pattern weight with some fun, um, fun decoration on it. So I'm going to go into my super designs and look for some sewing themed designs. So I'll just type in sewing in super designs and show you the drop down here. And I can see I have quite a few different little sewing type of designs I could incorporate into my project. When I switch back the camera to my machine camera, you can see some of the weights I've already created using some of these super designs. But I'm going to take um, just this pin cushion here. And a reason why I like to use super designs is because they can be resized or digitized essentially um, on the fly. That means that I can set the size I want for my finished design. Every Super Design does have a default size it starts at, but you can make them larger or smaller. I'm going to take this pin cushion down to 40 millimeters and just click apply. Put it right in the center of my workspace. Now my pattern weight is going to be about the size of this hoop. So I have a little bit more space to work with. So I think I'll add a frame. I just want to create something a little bit more exciting. And I kind of like the candle wicking shields, um, they kind of remind me of little pin heads. So I went to frames and I selected the round um, candle wicking frame. And I'm just going to click apply, leaving all the settings as is. And there I go. I have a nice little frame of candle wicking stitches surrounding my pin cushion. Now, I want to make this just a tad more interesting. And I was playing with this earlier. I wanted a square around my circle. However, there's no square in, the, in my options, but there is a square on point, essentially. So I'm going to work with that. Again, selecting that. However, this time I don't have my design selected because I want to be able to work with that frame independently. And I'm going to choose to not have it grouped. Okay. So let me apply that. And from here, you can see I have green squares on my frame. And it's outside my hoop. So I'm just going to bring this down. Whoops. 
I right clicked when I should have left clicked. I apologize. And I'm just going to play with this a bit more, reshaping it how I like it to be shaped. And then if I come back to my home tab, I do have a quick center and hoop icon that will help me get that the way I want it. So that just creates an interesting uh, little design that I can use for my pincushion or for my pattern weight, rather. It's pincushion on a pattern weight. All right, so that's just one quick way you can create a design. Don't be afraid to explore frames and super designs. And within frames, we even have like little flourishes. So we have some fun little accents that you could create. It's fun to create little mini designs. <clears throat> now, if you'd like to see, I actually did this as a project in a hoop, but you can certainly make a pattern weight in the sewing mode as well. To do a pattern, to create this in the hoop, I went over to my Create tab, and I went into my Digitizing. I'll just wait for that to open up fully. And I did, I selected the Start a New Design with No Picture. All I'm digitizing is a square, so I don't need a picture to digitize a square. I am keeping with my 80 by 80 millimeter hoop and click finish. Now I preset my grid um, to be at five millimeters because I wanted to use that as a reference point. And I'm going to start my first one with quick create. So quick create will let me um, choose something as simple as just a running stitch. So I'm not gonna use a fill. I just wanna digitize a running stitch and I just want to digitize a square. So we have these quick shapes that we can use in digitizing. Change it to shape three, and then click on the shape. And lo and behold, I have suddenly have a square here. Now I'm just going to expand my square using the blue corner points. I'm coming out to within one grid of my corner. Again, this is a size I predetermined I wanted to use. There we go. And then I right click and I have now created um, a running stitch of a square. Very simple, very quick. Then I uh, want to add a color change because this way I can't, um, <clears throat> I don't have to worry about anything um, getting color sorted together. So I like to kind of protect my things and, and do it that way. And I wanted to create another um, square that will be how I lay my fabric onto my embroidery and turn it inside out. So I don't want a complete square. I need to leave an opening for turning. So instead, I'm going to go over to point create and choose, I want the triple stitch. I want this to be nice and strong. And then I click on create area or line. I'm going to start in about three grids. So I have a, a corner to turn, maybe about three and a half ish grids. And I'm just going to click one point and come into my corner. Oops. And by holding down my shift key as I click, I will get a nice square corner. So I held down shift as I come across to my corners. Come up here to this corner and I want my stitching to stop about here and I will correct this circle by clicking on my shift key. Again, right click. I've just digitized my fabric, uh, my step rather, that will hold my backing fabric in place. This will make more sense to you probably when I stitch this out, which we're going to see stitched out in just a couple of minutes. Okay. So I've just saved, I just have this in digitizing and I can link it back to my embroidery. So I'm going to come back here to my embroidery and click on finish. And you can see that I have in my film strip, I have my original pin cushion that I did. I have my extra square, which, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't like that so much. So I'm going to remove that extra square just by clicking on delete. 
And then I have my assembly um, for my in the hoop pin cushion. Now, I want one, I want color one of what I just digitized, that blue color to stitch first. That's going to provide the outline. And then I want my embroidery to stitch second, the pin cushion. And then I want the orange stitching, this last running stitch that's going to hold it together. That's a triple stitch, rather. I want that to stitch last. So in order to quickly change it, there's a lot of different ways you can do this, but this is just a quick way you can do it. I'm going to first off combine my design, and then I'm going to take the design over to modify because there's a really nice way to change the sequence of stitching in modify. On the right hand side, you see the design panel, and you see all my colors for my. Uh, candle wicking frame and my pin cushion and then i have the color for the first frame stitching and then the tack down stitching here when you hover the screen highlights what it is well i want to move color seven to be first and when you're in modify using the design panel there are these arrows right here that allow you to move a color up so i'm just going to move that blue color all the way up so now it will stitch first then i'll have my frame and my pin cushion in fact i may want to stitch that frame after my last color of my pin cushion so i'm going to move that down and have my orange stitching last easy enough to pop back over to the home tab and you'll see that my colors stay in the order that I put them in. So if I were to go to design player and I will just play this through at a higher rate of speed, you can see that it's going to stitch that outline first and then the middle design and then my tack down. Okay. So I know that's just a very quick demo on how this is created. Um, but I wanted to share with you how I created this in this excuse me, in the software. So I'm going to come back to you here in just a moment. And let me do a quick camera change and see where we're at. There we are. Okay. So at the machine, I already have stitched, and, and this is a different design. I created a little, a little um, super design from a little pink shirt. Let me get you a little bit of a closer view for you. There you go. And I've already stitched the first several colors of my design. And I'm ready to put the backing fabric on. I'm not sure how well it's defined, but there is a light yellow stitching here. That was my perimeter and then my design. And I'm ready to stitch the last color choice, um, which is my frame going around. My backing fabric is a cotton fabric. I stitched my front of my weight on a cotton twill with a cutaway stabilizer. I really like this cutaway mesh stabilizer that we have. It's not terribly bulky, but it's very strong and um, it adds a lot of body to something that um, will get a little bit of a wear and tear on it. So I like that um, mesh stabilizer for that purpose. I've put in a dark colored thread, <clears throat> so you can see this better on camera. Um, I would not use such a dark colored thread in real life, but I think it shows up a lot better. So I have placed my backing fabric right sides down over top my embroidery. And I know um, that it's going to fit. I, I cut it a little bit generous, you know, because when you're doing things live, you know, you never want to chant something. But that's the purpose of having this stitching line here is to make sure that my cut fabric extends over that cut line. So this will just take about one minute to stitch around. And it is doing a triple stitch. 
So it'll be nice and strong. That was pretty quick and easy, wasn't it? Oh, and I love when my machine sings to me afterwards. All righty, so we're going to come over here to my workspace so that we can continue our project here. Let me just get myself turned around for you. There we go. So this is what I just took off the hoop for my project. You can see my embroidery on the back side. So we'll just take this hoop off. Isn't this the cutest little hoop? I just love this little 80 millimeter hoop. <clears throat> if you stitch um, on anything small, maybe you do doll clothes or do clothes for um, infants or toddlers, perfect size hoop just to um, not waste stabilizer makes it a lot easier to hoop. Alrighty, so once we have our fabric removed from our hoop, we're going to cut it out. So I've already have a second sample with it trimmed around. And I want to show you uh, just a bit more about trimming. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a zoom here. So I can show you on, cor on the corners to, when you turn something inside out and you have all this extra bulk that has to be folded inside, it's very helpful if you cut across the corner. Just taking a diagonal cut across there reduces how much bulk you have. Now, I did leave a nice generous seam allowance. I don't need that any longer. I'm just going to trim down. around all three sides. Again, cutting diagonally across that corner and cutting the bottom across. Now at the top end where I have my stitches um, stopping here, I am going to go ahead and just cut almost to the stitching line on each side and then take some of this extra bulk out by cutting across the corners. You can see I, I just did a step ahead. I went ahead and pressed um, my turn back uh, just to make it a little bit faster for you so I didn't have to have my iron set up as well. Okay, so a quick, quick trim around. Maybe I trim this one just a bit more. Trim that all the way around. All right, so now we're going to turn this inside out. So I find that if I find a corner and kind of wiggle that corner out with my thumb, I can easily get this turned inside out for you. All right, now, you know, it's always tempting to take the point of your scissors and push it in to those corners to get that um, last little bit of the corner out. But scissors can be kind of damaging if you poke too hard. So I have found using a, a chopstick, uh, that works really well. Now, I also have a bamboo point turner. You might be able to find one of those at your local dealer or your local quilt shop or fabric store. I absolutely love my little bamboo point turner. However, it is currently um, in my travel luggage, so it's not accessible to me today. So see how much easier that is to, to pop out those corners all the way around? And I got one more here to do, but I already have one completely turned inside out for you just to make things go a little quicker. So. Print on the back, on the front, okay? Alrighty, so let me show you the next step in creating this. And because this is such a small design, 
you could easily create several in the hoop all at once. And that way you can speed up your assembly of your project. So now I borrowed a couple things from my kitchen. I borrowed a funnel and I borrowed um, just a disposable bowl because we need to stuff these pattern weights. And by the way, here's one of my pattern weights that I've made before has some buttons and thread on it. And here's one that I, you might recognize this little thimble design was one of our super designs, as was the needle in the middle. But how did I get six thimbles so perfectly arranged? Well, I used the Encore feature within the software to do that. So just a quick and easy way um, to add more interest. And here's another one that I did some buttons and that needle, pretty metallic thread. It's always nice for a little glimmer. And here I created just a little panel of motif um, using quilt block wizard. I just created a mini quilt block, filled it with motif only, and I used the thread and the scissors. Those are some of our sewing stitches available on our machines. And they make a great, essentially, all over fabric. That's essentially what I did with, with those designs. Okay, back to the kitchen items. So we need to we need to fill our weights with something you know that that has some stability to it and there's a lot of different things you can use um, popular items would be using dried rice dried beans um coffee beans although coffee beans can get a little oily so you might want to maybe double line your fabric you wouldn't want to transfer any oil into onto a project inadvertently um, you could use lentils um, there's a lot of different food things that you could use, but you can also get from your local craft store some of the plastic poly pellets, okay? Now, my bag of poly pellets is a little bit uh, uh, brittle, so it's inside another Ziploc bag so that I can't um, make too big of a mess here. And see how good this works on camera guys so i have my finished um turned out little pattern weight and i have my opening and i'm going to take my funnel and i'm holding um this over my bowl here so that hopefully if i make a mess it won't be too bad to clean up and then i can just take some poly pellets i should have brought a scoop down with me whoops there they go they bounce around a lot and just shake them down into my weight and i have a fairly small funnel here i'm going to grab a slightly larger funnel with a bigger opening and that will speed things up again just take a little at a time And kind of shake those down in. Now I've um, I had a friend who used to make a little um, scrap bag catcher type thing with a pincushion attached, and she always made her little pincushion parts out of sand. She filled it with sand, so she made an inner bag that was filled with sand just playground sand like sterilized sand and then she would um fill that sew it up and then put that filled bag inside of another another bag so that could be another option as well although i have not experimented with playground sand so all right once you have your pellets in place we could put a few more in here um however for the sake of time and I don't want to be spilling my pellets everywhere. I'm just going to clip that closed. <clears throat> and now we would go switch our machine over to sewing mode and simply sew across, sew straight across there. If you are fussy, <clears throat> I'm sorry, if you wanted to, you know, not see any stitching, by all means, 
you're welcome to get out that um, needle and thread and, and do a nice invisible stitch on there. But simple and easy to create a little in the hoop pattern weight. Okay, so just give me a minute to move these out of the way so I can't spill them during the rest of my time with you. There we go. I'm going to check to see if we have any questions. So let's see here. Um, oh, the machine I'm using, I happen to be using my Designer Epic 2 today. However, um, something like this can be created using any embroidery machine. And if you don't have an embroidery machine, it's okay. You don't need one. You can simply sew squares of fabric together and turn it inside out. Use some print fabric or maybe even use some decorative stitches. Much like uh, this, although this was done in the hoop, there'd be nothing stopping you from decorating a base fabric with some fun threads and decorative stitches and use that as your fabric. Um, your friends will be envious of you when they see how creative you can be. So um, that's the machine I'm using. And you're right, um, whomever commented about being a quick gift, you know, you might belong to a quilting guild or some sort of community organization where you give a little gift exchange at the holidays or you have like a, you know, a birthday club or something like that. What a great gift. Put Make several of these, put them in a little cellophane bag, decorate them with a ribbon. And what a, what a nice, thoughtful gift. And just a review of some of the items you can use to fill the pattern weights. You could use um, a rice, any sort of dried grocery item, rice, coffee beans, lentils, um, black beans. Probably I'd stay with the smaller beans rather than like a large dried lima bean. Um, you know, I would, for this project, I'd buy whatever was on sale or whatever, um, you know, it gives you the most value for the money. But even a one pound bag of rice would make a lot of pattern weights. Oh, someone suggests to turn the project into designer cornhole bags. Well, that's a great thing. And you could certainly use the dried corn to stuff um, your pattern weight bags as well. So what? A, that's another great suggestion for filling it. Uh, another suggestion is the crushed walnut shells. And that works well for pin cushions too. So absolutely, that's another great item um, that you can use to fill your pattern weights. Alrighty, so let's talk about some other things that you can do to organize your sewing space. I'm going to put this pattern weight aside so I can't lose any of its filler. And there are so many things that you can do to speed up your sewing and organize your sewing space. Um, you don't have to have a lot of space to work with. You just have to be smart about using your space. So first off, I want to talk about your bobbins. So organizing your bobbins is something I find very, very helpful. I like these little bobbin rings. Many of our dealers sell them. You can find them in many retailers across the country. Just call a bobbin saver. I've um, seen them in different colors. I happen to have red and blue. And I have two different machines that I use, and they take two different bobbins. So I have my bobbins that are my group seven machine. Those take those green bobbins. I have them in my blue ring. And then I have a red ring for the bobbins that fit my designer Epic 2. And it would fit the designer Ruby 90 or the Epic 95Q. Any of the bobbins that are the bigger blue bobbins. So having that separated um, just saves me time. I can just keep one by each machine that I'm using. I do have one more of the bobbin rings that have has just bobbins with embroidery thread. So I have some of that, um, the 60 weight bobbin thread. And I like to, when I buy a spool of bobbin thread, 
if I have six or seven empty bobbins, I'll go ahead and fill all my empty bobbins with my embroidery thread. Now, the bobbins do last quite a long time. The um, epic bobbins hold 30% more than the green bobbins, so they do last a long time. Um, so I keep a whole separate ring of just embroidery thread. So that, that again, is another time saver for, for me. If you don't embroider, then you might just want to have bobbins filled with thread colors you use most often. If you do mending or repairs, you might use a lot of gray or taupe or red or blue, or maybe you need to hem school uniforms or, or work on things like that. Um, I was a band uniform mom for four years, and so I always had bobbins and thread um, matched together that matched the band uniforms because I was every Friday after a game or a performance, we would be fixing uniforms on Saturdays. So that was a big time saver for me. Other things that are great time savers are if you don't have a machine that can um, fill your bobbin while you're embroidering, you might want to invest in a little bobbin winder. So this bobbin winder will wind both um, sizes of our Husqvarna Viking bobbins and it can be plugged in or it can work with batteries as well. So you could essentially take this on the road with you if you're one of those people that are so fortunate that you can travel with your machine and, and sew on your downtime. And um, this can be a big time saver for you if you can't fill bobbins while you're running your embroideries. You can do that separately. So that's a nice little time saver as well. I have found it very useful. It's also helpful to organize your projects as you go and your supplies. So I have just some little baskets. These little white baskets are real nice. I can keep threads for like a current project just out. It's, if I put the thread back in here, it saves it from it rolling around on the floor, getting knocked off my table, having to find it again. So my threads I just used for my project, I'm gonna put back in here so they're nice and easy. Then I can just take a minute and put these threads away when I'm finished with the project, use my basket again for my next set of threads. Whether it's sewing or embroidery, I like to do that. I like to have things handy I don't always get to sit and sew for a long period of time. So I might have 15 minutes or maybe even a half an hour here and there. And if I keep my supplies all together, it really improves my um, the use of my time when I do have it. I also like to keep my needles handy at hand. So again, I just have a little white basket. Now this usually sits inside of a cabinet drawer. However, I brought it out for you to see how I store it. I keep my needle guide book right handy with my needles. All right. So I can reference it and look up anything I might need to find out about using a particular needle or if I need to buy um, a different size twin needle, it tells me every size that's available. So I keep that little booklet right with my needles. And I also keep a spare um, tool, the gray tool that comes with your machine. You'll find that you your dealer can order you extra. Um, I have a spare one I keep with my needles because it just makes it so much easier when I go to change my needle if this is right with the needles. So that little hole, let's see if I can get that. There we go. That hole here is got a flat ed, edge, so when you um, put your needle in there, it holds it steady for you as you put it in your machine. Okay, so I like that idea a lot. I already shared with you my Chinese chopstick tool. That is one of my favorite time saver tools, along with keeping a pair of serger tweezers, not just at my serger, but at my sewing machine. They can be great for turning corners or for holding a thread or grabbing a thread um, out of the way. So, now here I have one of our little rope bowls. This is a rope bowl that's wrapped in fabric. 
And I find these are very helpful, again, to keep near my machine um, and with just whatever tool I might need. I was embroidering something with black bobbin thread earlier, so I had a black spare bobbin ready to roll. Um, I had the foot I was using and an extra screwdriver and a couple extra of these. Can you tell I love this tool? Because I have three of them out here to show you. <laughs> That's just one of my favorite tools. All right, so keeping your embroidery stabilizers organized is important too, and it'll save time. So I have a lot of stabilizers, and I have them, again, in a cabinet, but when I'm working on a project, I like to keep out the stabilizer I'm using. So just this little fabric basket I made, it's just got some embroidery featured around it. Um, let me push it back a little bit so you can see it better. Just has some different embroideries made with some piping and some foam in the um, sides to keep it stiffer. Just a great little place to stash stabilizers or I can put, if it's a small hoop, I can just tuck that hoop in there to keep that organized as well. I like these little um, labels. They actually, they work, remember those slap bracelets from like when you were a kid? They're kind of like that in that they conform to the size, but they have a place where you can write on what type of stabilizer it is and then just wrap this around. And then the marker that comes with it, you can erase your word when you like maybe you run out of it and you don't repurchase that you can reuse the labels for another another project i also keep the label for the stabilizer inside the tube in case i need to recall like what you know is it one that i need to fuse or is it water soluble or any special instructions um, that I need with to use that stabilizer. All right, let me come back. Um, checking on questions here, Amy. Let's see. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, someone asked, where did I get the needle booklet? I got that needle booklet at my local dealer. It's an item that they can order for you if they don't have it in stock. And um, I'll give Amy the part number so she can put it in our comments. Um, Amy, that part number is 9207-40096. Okay, 9207-40096. So your dealer can order this little booklet. I think it was about $5 or something. Um, a great reference and makes a great uh, gift too if you're giving a little sewing gift for a birthday or Christmas or a holiday um, include that as well okay let's see here all right we caught up with our questions for the moment so let me just come over here and show you my thread boxes. So as you can imagine, most sewers have a lot of threads. So finding a way to organize your thread is um, critical and it helps with your time management as well. Now I don't have a lot of um, wall space that's easy for me to reach because my tables are up against walls. So it's very hard, I'm not very tall, so it's hard for me to reach over my table to get um, to my wall to use the type of thread rack that you see mounted on the wall. I do like those. They provide art and decoration, and you can always see at a glance what thread you have. However, I have found um, some clear plastic storage boxes at my local fabric retailer, and I... These will hold 30 spools at a time of a mini king cone for embroidery. And it would fit something that's a little bit taller as well, because there's maybe another three quarters of an inch with the lid closed, probably another inch or so. So if you have a, a cone thread that's a little bit larger, not a serger cone thread, 
but a cone thread that would work too. Or it could work to hold a sewing thread spool as well. Whoops. So here's a, a sewing thread spool and it will fit in there as well. I like these because I can organize my thread by color and I have a box with yellows and peaches and another box with more greens and etc. So I tend to organize my thread, my embroidery thread colors um, by color family and I organize my sewing thread in the same manner. So there are a number of different styles of, of these boxes. Some are more square, some are more rectangle. There are larger ones to hold your serger thread or your overlock thread. Um, there are the racks for the walls. There's a lot of different things that you can use to organize. I mean, anything is better than just a shoe box, right? Um, something with a cover on it will help keep dust off your thread. And that's that will help your thread last a bit longer as well. Alrighty, um, other things for organizing, I or just making your life easier. Instead of a traditional pin cushion, I like to use a magnet pin cushion because you know I can turn it upside down, and if I do drop my pins, the magnet really makes a quick cleanup of all my pins. And for my clips, I've really gotten into using the little clever clips um, for sewing since some of my sewing friends have kind of converted me. So I just, they came in a plastic bag and that was pretty worthless for me for storing. So again, I just found a little, um, I think this was maybe something I found in the food storage department, just a little like leftover container and um, found that I can keep them in there with a lid on it so that it doesn't um, manage to spill everywhere. And then for organizing your projects, so, you know, some, some sewists are, they start a project and they finish a project beginning to end and they never, um, they don't ever start anything till they finish something. I'm not that sewist. I'm more of the sewist that, that will get started with something and then I need to move on to something else, either for a deadline or for, um, you know, another idea or I need to co-purchase something to finish my project. And I imagine there's a lot of you out there who also have at least a couple projects started at the same time. So I have found using the oversized um, zip top um, type storage bags for food um, to be very helpful. This is a two gallon size bag. The one gallon just usually isn't quite big enough for me, but I like to keep my uh, work in progress project in here. So this is a, a ribbon embroidery design um, that I stitched and I have my pieces cut for my, um, frame around it, my border around it, and it's going to be a pillow. So I have my backing piece and my um, border piece, and then I have my strips cut for my piping, and my piping cord is in the bag along with my spool of thread. So this makes it easier for me to finish something because everything I need to finish this is right here, and I can just pick up my bag, sit down, and um, go ahead and finish it. I'll also do a bag for like a future project. Like I have these strips of reds and green fabric left over from another project and it's a heavier canvas fabric. So I thought, wow, this would make a really cool Christmas project. It's not what I initially used this fabric for. I used it for two different projects, happened to have it together. So my idea is to create um, some Christmas chain type decoration with this fabric. So I took the time to go ahead and cut it in strips and I made myself a little note as to what I want to do with this fabric and then put it into a zip top bag. And that way it didn't end up in my scrap bin, which is probably where it would have gone. 
but at least I have it here with what my idea was. If I never get to that idea, well, I haven't really lost anything except I didn't find this in my scrap bag when I wanted to use it. So um, doing simple things like that can really help speed up your sewing time. And I know as fall approaches, our time will get busier and busier. After all, kids are going back to school. There'll be fall sports to attend um, and fall fundraisers and all the other things that go along with that. So making time for you to sew is, is important to yourself. So um, let me check on our comments here. Oh, where did I find two gallon bags? Um, I have to look for them, but I have found that them at some grocery stores as well as some um, of the um, stores like Target or Walmart, um, any of those type of stores look um in the food storage section <clears throat> and they're a little challenging to find at some retailers but i have found them locally so um i imagine it's something you could probably purchase online as well but i usually try to support our local merchants another comment we have is um that this person also agrees can be easily distracted sometimes, and they also use the large zip top bags. And also, um, bedding often comes in a vinyl or clear pouch with a zipper on it. And those bags, like your a comforter set or even a set of sheets, um, saving those and using them for future sewing projects or for storing a finished quilt that would be great. So that's a great tip. Thank you so much for sharing that tip. I know I've saved um, like the bags that a comforter set comes in um, to store other large bulky projects, usually something made with polar fleece because, you know, that polar fleece is so bulky. Okay. You might also find it handy to keep a little notebook um, with your project um ideas um a creative people tend to get ideas at the most in a in opportune time when you're not at your machine so if you keep a little journal book nearby you can jot down your idea and uh maybe even draw a little sketch or take a picture on your phone and reference the picture in your little notebook for your future project ideas okay all righty so um, let's see, what other comments do you have? Wanted to go back to the machine here a minute and let's see here. There we go, because someone asked what machine I was working on. And here we go. You can see here it's my designer Epic 2. And you can see the embroidered design on screen here um, is displayed and it was it is finished. So it's back at the beginning of the embroidery. I'm going to come back to you guys. There we go. So what kind of fall sewing projects do you have planned for your sewing? I'll bet some of you are probably getting ready to make costumes or lengthen pants or shorten pants that you've bought for school. Um, and in many parts of the country, it's still way too warm to switch out to fall clothing, but it will eventually come. I'm not asking for it to come any anytime soon. Um, I'm enjoying the, the warm weather here we have in Ohio, but um, certainly not looking forward to the to the the white flakes that fly from the sky. I can't say that word, not yet. Um, so it's probably a little early to switch out your clothing for the next season. But 
there will be things um, for you to do that way. I imagine some of you may be um, getting ready for um, maybe some fall craft shows and, and things like that. So if you'd like to share what you're going to be working on this fall, please feel free to put it in the comments. So, all right, Amy, let's find out when our next Facebook lives are. If I don't have any other questions, we can end a few minutes early. Um, let's see. Our next Husfarna Viking Facebook Live is on Wednesday, August the 16th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. That's a different time than usual with Meredith McClanahan for some fun sewing in your PJs, um, self-care projects to help you relax. So again, that is Wednesday, April, August 16th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time with Meredith for some self-care projects. And then we have a Facebook Live for our My Sonet on Wednesday, August 9th. That would be next week. That one will be at 3 p.m. Eastern or 2 p.m. Central um, with our software educator, Mickey Hudson. And she's going to be teaching you about draw and paint in your software. Now that draw and paint is very helpful when you want to digitize something other than a square box like I did today. So join Mickey next week for my Sonet and join Meredith on the 16th for self-care sewing. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.